and YouTube. You go to the 105.3 The Fan Twitch stream and the 105.3 The Fan YouTube channel. Uh, you can uh, join us uh, all sorts of ways here. Extra innings on your home of the Rangers, 105.3 The Fan. Uh, the Rangers bats did what the Rangers bats have done for the most part this year outside of a, a little mini stretch here. And again, I, I don't know what's going to happen over the next hundred and what, 1448 games. I feel really darn good about the fact that this lineup is going to be a very, very tough lineup to keep down. That doesn't mean that they're not going to have any challenges whatsoever. Uh, and it is perfectly normal, as I know you know. But it's still sometimes hard to, uh, I guess, be rational about it when you're in the eye of the storm. And that is that a team's going to slump. And when it's early in the season and you don't have 50 games of maybe positive evidence under your belt, I, I get it, you're, you're concerned, but... Uh, hopefully the Rangers uh, have instilled the confidence in you that, yeah, they're going to be slumps. They're going to be stretches where the lineup is just not very productive, but uh, this is a really good group. They've scored 10 or more runs three times already this season. Uh, they, they continue to draw walks. Uh, the Rangers drew five walks. They were hit by uh, two pitches. Uh, they got on base 19 times tonight. This is a really good lineup. And, uh, it is a lineup that hasn't even really hit for the type of power that I expect that they will. You think about home run numbers for the Rangers. Marcus Simeon only has one. Corey Seager only has one. Uh, you don't have any from Wyatt Langford. You now have two from Jonah Heim. Josh Young is hurt. Nathaniel Lowe is hurt. Uh, and you only have one from Evan Carter. So... It's not like anyone other than Adolis Garcia is hitting the long ball. Adolis has four home runs now through 14 games. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a really nice pace. But it's not like Adolis has been on some ridiculous tear where he's got, say, six home runs in a 14-game stretch where you know he is capable of that sort of a streak. So the Rangers are finding ways to score runs without the home run ball. I think that's important, and it's usually an indicator of uh, a, a team that is going to be able to sustain a high level of offensive production if in fact the home run ball figures to be a part of what they do and and it does right I don't think anyone looks at this Rangers team and does not think that this group is going to hit a lot of home runs uh, let's not forget that in 2023 bringing back pretty much the same group uh, the Rangers uh, hit 233 home runs that was tied for the most in the American League this is a team that is full of power it's a team however that uh, has not really broke out the the power bats here so far in 2024, but they're still scoring runs. And 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 just to give you an idea, all right, the Rangers, despite the fact that they have had their their slumps, they're third in the majors in runs per game. They're behind the Braves and Dodgers, the two teams uh, who, along with the Rangers, you figure to pace the way offensively. They're one of just six teams averaging at least five runs per game. All right, so I know the sample size is small, but even with the the valleys the Rangers have had already, uh, they're still producing offensively. Uh, on base percentage, third in the majors. Their batting average is second in the majors. Uh, and then the slug, which, again, even without the home run ball, is still third in the majors. Uh, this is a really good offensive team, and they showed it again tonight. And if you listen to the network portion of the postgame show, in the third inning, they had the six-run inning. And yes, Jonah Heim's three-run home run was a big part of it. But to me, the the walk from Seager, yeah, that was that was easy. Corey Seager, I think, figured out early on. J.P. France wanted nothing to do with him. But then two batters later, Adolis Garcia remaining disciplined. And then the very next man, Josh Smith, with the bases loaded and a full count, not chasing. He was unrelenting in that regard. And you know that really set things up. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the discipline early in the inning, allowed for the big hits later in the inning. It helped wear J.P. France down, and it also showed him, hey, this team's not going to chase. We, I have to I have to throw him a strike. Uh, and the Rangers obviously capitalized. All right, we'd love to chat with you at 877-881-1053, 877-881-1053. Let's start with Carter in Fort Worth joining us here on Extra Innings. Hey, Carter. How about them Rangers? And, Jared, it's, it's 
super fun when the Rangers win, but it's just even that much better when it comes against the Astros. And, you know, you, you just touched on the lineup. They're, they're not hitting the home runs like we may have expected, but we're still continuing to deliver with runners in scoring position and runners on base. I mean, another great performance tonight with, with that displayed. Um, my one area of concern was, you know, it's a 12 to three game in the seventh inning and we're still forced to use Robertson and Yates tonight. Uh, it's just Brock Burke and, and Grant Anderson. They've, they've had a couple of rough outings the last couple of times out. I'm just curious what you're seeing. It doesn't seem like they're, they're missing too many bats right now. They're not. And that's a good point. Uh, before we get into a little negative. Let's just quickly proceed it with a positive here. Rangers win, Astros lose. Today was a good day. All right, it was. Now, not all good days are perfect. And tonight's good day or good night was not perfect. And Carter uh, identified the area uh, that that most... Uh, most accurately represents that imperfection. And yes, it's what happened once the Rangers took a 12-3 lead. Now, good job by David Robertson. Good job by Kirby H. shutting the door in the 8th and ninth innings. Really good job. It stinks that you had to go to them, though. I think the Rangers would have loved to have maybe gone Brock Burke and then Grant Anderson to finish it out, or Brock Burke and Yeri Rodriguez, or something that did not involve any of their high leverage guys, especially because they're in the middle of the 17 game and 17 day stretch and any extra bullets you can save, especially from veterans like Robertson and Yates, you want to save. Now I saw some people on Twitter say, well, I can't believe they put Brock Burke in the game guys, gals. If you can't trust a guy to pitch in a game in which you're winning by nine, then he shouldn't be on the roster. Right, And if he is on the roster, you've got to be able to pitch him in that spot. Now, Brock Burke might have pitched his way into a conversation about his roster status. He has struggled this year. When Brock Burke throws his fastball at 96-plus, he's really tough to hit. The problem is it's just not consistently getting to that velocity range. And it's not like it's 952 and then 96.7, and then 95.4, and 96.3. We're getting some 96s, but then you're going to get the 93 kind of out of nowhere. And the 94, it's just there's too much of a range for a guy who's in there to throw one inning. And the other thing is he's not getting lefties out. You know, he gives up the home run to uh, Kyle Tucker. He hit Jordan Alvarez prior to that and didn't really seem like uh, he had much comfort facing Alvarez. He gives up the double to John Singleton. All right, if you're Brock Burke, you, you got to have a trick. You got There's got to be something, right? And he's a lefty. So, all right, maybe maybe he's not going to be as dominant as he was in 2022. But maybe he can still get lefties out. But he's not really doing that. He's not really getting anyone out right now. And I don't know if the Rangers feel like now is a good time to make a roster move. Uh, I think it's very possible that uh, I think it's very possible that they do. Uh, and remember, Michael Lorenzen is going to be coming up here in a few days. But I think there was also some thought that maybe Yerry Rodriguez would go down as well. The Rangers have options, right? They absolutely have options. You've got, uh, obviously, Lorenzen is going to take a spot, and maybe you end up keeping Yerry Rodriguez. Maybe Brock Burke has jumped ahead of Yerry Rodriguez and the guy most likely to be demoted, or maybe the Rangers feel like they need to demote two guys uh, in Yerry and Brock Burke. Mark Church is an option, although Mark Church, you know, is a righty. Do you want a lefty? Is it important to have a lefty? If it is, do you consider Danny Duffy? Maybe. You got to create a 40-man spot, though, if you do. Do you consider Antoine Kelly? All right, he's a lefty, a, a younger guy. Control hasn't necessarily been a strength, but he gets a lot of swings and misses. Do you feel like you need a lefty? Is that important? You know, because Jake Latz is pitching well. Is, is that enough? Do you need more lefty representation in your bullpen? especially now that Kirby Yates is possibly this team's new closer. We'll talk about this in a little bit. But Kirby Yates is a guy who, yes, he's a right-handed thrower, but he dominates lefties. And so if Kirby Yates is going to be your ninth inning guy, then you don't have him 
maybe in the seventh or eighth situationally, depending on, you know, if there's some tough lefties coming up. So the Rangers have some decisions to make here. Uh, but one decision that they might not feel like they need to make is whether or not Brock Burke needs to go down to AAA or not, you know, and, and try and get things right. Uh, that decision perhaps was made tonight. I can tell you this, whether or not Brock Burke is is on the roster tomorrow at the big league level, I can assure you that Bruce Bochy was not too pleased that he had to go to David Robertson and Kirby Yates. And also that after taking Corey Seager out with a nine-run lead, it became a four-run game. Now, Corey Seager's spot never came up again. And I don't fault Bruce Bochy at all for taking Corey Seager out in a nine-run game. It, it just You're trying to keep the guy off his legs a little bit. He didn't really have a spring training. You got to be able to do that. You got to be able to pick your spots. A 12 3 game does not need to become a 12 8 game. It just doesn't. And that, yes, there was a lot of great tonight. That was the, the biggest area where, hey, it can be better. It needs to be better. Lewis and Mesquite, you're on with us here. Thanks so much for waiting patiently. Lewis, you're up here on 105 3 The Fan. Well, thank you for taking my call. Now, I have a question. Hopefully, you guys can answer it for me. What exactly does Angel Hernandez have on Rob Manfred that he is still a major uh, a, a major league uh, man? I mean, uh, umpire. I just don't understand. I mean, the man misses call after call. From what I understand, he looked straight into the uh, eclipse the other day, and nothing happened to his eyes. So I just do not understand how it is that this man is still employed by Major League Baseball. Lewis, it's a great question. I think you have to ask the umpires union uh, and the strength of the umpires union because my understanding is that the umpires union has been able to successfully rebuff efforts to increase, uh, for lack of a better word, adjudication uh, and, and, and assessments against umpires to uh, better determine their status. Uh, even though we've got you know, things like ump scorecards on Twitter out there that, that grades the umpires and whatnot. And we've got the, the, the stat cast data, the, uh, the Hawkeye data that, you know, allows us to better understand movements and pitch locations and stuff like that, which helps with ball strike calling. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for you, Lewis. I really don't. I, I, I am agreeing with the sentiment behind the question, uh, but the umpires have a really strong union and, I guess maybe that's helped. Uh, one other thing to note here, uh, just going back to the pitching. Uh, so, Jose LeClerc pitching tonight with the Rangers leading by a score of 12-3, to 3, a clear indication that they do not plan on using him right now as the closer. How did he do? Well, if you missed it, Jose LeClerc, a scoreless inning. He gave up a hit and a walk. Uh you know, the, the walk was a somewhat competitive at bat. I thought what was really impressive, the Slambia was moving and he was throwing strikes. You know, I, I just thought the movement on the pitch uh, was really good. He had a couple of strikeouts. You know, obviously you'd love a clean inning. He didn't have a clean inning. It's a step in the right direction. I imagine he'll continue to get a few non-ninth inning roles or opportunities to try and continue to get things right. Now, is this a permanent move? I don't know if it's a permanent move. I, I, you know, let's see how others perform as well. Uh, but I do think it's it's the direction the Rangers plan on going here in the very near future. Now, is it going to be Kirby Yates getting the ninth every time and David Robertson getting the eighth? I think it's too soon to tell. Uh, I think if you've got the ability with a runway to make decisions like this, if the eighth inning features a couple of really tough left-handed hitters, then it's very possible that Yates gets the eighth and then you leave Robertson for the ninth. But, you know, for veterans like that, they might want to have a better idea sooner if they're the eighth or the ninth inning guy. All right, I don't think either guy cares uh, whether or not they are going to be pitching more consistently in the eighth or the ninth. I just think maybe, I, I don't know the answer to this, but sometimes veteran guys like that might have a preference. I think we'll get, uh, we'll, we'll get uh, information on that now that Bruce Bochy has used Jose LeClerc in the six. 
I think now he, I don't want to say he's forced to give honest answers, but if you ask the question, which was asked before, you know, he can kind of give you a fluffy answer. Now he's kind of got to acknowledge it. And uh, now you can maybe get a little more insight into what he's thinking here moving forward. Hey, let's quickly pause. We're going to go back to the phones. We'll quickly pause though for station identification on your home of the Rangers, 105 through the fan. You're listening to 100,000 watts of Rangers baseball on KRLD FM, KRLD HD1, Dallas, Fort Worth. We are 105.3 The Fan. All right, the Rangers over the Astros, 12 to 8, 877 881 The number to call. Hello to everyone on Twitter live. Uh, go to at Jared Sandler on Twitter. Find the link. You can join that way. Braden in Arlington, you're on next here on the home of the Rangers, 105.3 The Fan. Hey, it's always a pleasure, Jared. Yeah, I, I know you're talking about pitching right now, but I, as far as our offense is concerned, I I think we're going to be a lot better quicker than people are thinking, you know, with, with you know, because Young just went down, and that's a big blow to our offense. But it seems like Carter is definitely finding a groove, and for him to still have that elite eye, you know, an on-base percentage 200 points higher than your average, at least yesterday, if he can start getting that average up, and if Wyatt can kind of just keep doing what he's doing, and if Seager can keep getting healthy from that hernia surgery, I think the Rangers are going to be a lot better, a lot quicker than uh, people think. Yeah, I appreciate the call, Braden. Listen, I, if anyone, I the only thing I, I'd say to that is I, I think most people went into the season thinking the Rangers had an elite lineup, a, a top three to five lineup. I, any sort of sentiment that's come from the last handful of games. Like, oh my gosh, I'm worried. I mean, that's just kind of silly. And I don't know that anyone, ha- I don't think anyone has rationally assessed the Rangers lineup and expressed legitimate concerns. So uh, I, I I think people expected this lineup to be one of the best lineups out the shoot. And it's been one of the best lineups out the shoot. And I don't foresee it changing. With that said, even the best lineups are going to have pockets of games where things aren't going well and the Rangers just happen to have one of those pockets right here within the first two weeks of the season with all that said they still are performing uh, at an elite level uh, the the Rangers the Braves and the Dodgers lineups have set themselves apart from the rest of the league so uh, it is uh, you know it, I, I think even with certain individuals maybe not performing up to expectation it's just another demonstration of the lineup depth right you know because they're getting production from so many top to bottom and, and that helps uh carlos and dallas you're up next year rangers over the astros 12 to 8 here on your home of the rangers 105 through the fan hey carlos hey jared dude. let's go freaking rangers dude especially against the astros i just wanted to throw that out first and dude i'm really liking jared Walsh, man on first base like i like it man i like him a lot and I don't know what they're going to do when Nathaniel Lowe comes back, dude, but I'm really liking Walsh, dude. Like, I like his stuff. It's, and I'm, I kind of want to trade Leody, move Carter to center field, and Langford to left field. Any way we could trade him for to the Athletics to get that closer from the eighth, I forgot his name, but he was really good. And that's all I have for now. I appreciate it. That's lots of energy there from Carlos. And then we got we – got- Ross and Larry behind the glass. They're they're saying that Carlos best call of the night. Uh, I don't. There's no reason to. First of all, you're not going to get tremendous value uh, for Laodi. You're not going to get Mason Miller. That that's the guy you're talking about. Uh, it's going to take a lot more than that. Uh, Laodi not off to a great start offensively. Uh, small sample size. He has demonstrated improved patience. He's not really slugging. He is playing really good center field. Uh, if you were to move Laodi just because of you know the fact that he's already an ARB player, uh, and you know I don't know that you're 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 trading a guy who yes he's only 25 years old, but you know he's a couple years away from free agency, uh, three seasons away. It's not like you got five years of control. I mean there are a lot of factors. I don't think the value is going to be superb. That's not to say it doesn't exist. I think it absolutely exists. Uh, but I don't know that there's any reason to be so quick to move Laodi right now. I, I you know, I, I think you're fine leaving things right now as is. He's your ninth place hitter. Uh, give him some more time. Let's at least see where things stand at the end of the month 
and then we go from there. I, I think that's probably the most prudent. I, I'm not saying that we're not we don't get to a point eventually where Laoti's not just a, a an everyday player. I think it's very possible that we get to a situation where that's not the case. But I don't know that Laoti uh, necessarily needs to just be totally taken out of the mix right now. Let, let's just give him a couple weeks, see where things go, and assess there. It's you know it's not like White Langford is absolutely tearing the cover off the ball. He should be in there pretty much every day, obviously. But, you know, I don't know that there's any need to, to you know, again, rush that process. Let, you know, we can continue to ease guys in and, and figure things out. Uh, and I don't remember if Carlos said anything or had anything else. Uh, I just I was so taken by his energy. It was, it was amazing. Uh, extra ratings brought to you by our friends at Uber Eats. Home run deals all season long. Uh, Theron and Leonard joining us here. Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. Uh hey Jared. Uh, I just I was just wanted to talk, I guess, about the umpire problem in the MLB. It's unfortunate that it's gonna have to go to Robo Um, because I think you know, I think all that we really ever wanted was just more accountability. But the U- union won't have that. And I think any time, be it any field, there is a union that protects people who are incompetent that's not workers rights that's corruption i just i don't like it all right appreciate it yeah i listen i don't i don't disagree i understand the frustration with angel hernandez you know i thought he sucked for both teams tonight i i talking about um sucks like i don't i don't like doing the blame the ums i'm not saying like specific to Theron's call just in general you know that we should be talking about the game I I agree with Theron like it's I don't like the fact that there's consistent reason to discuss the umps uh, I look forward to when the automatic balls and strikes challenge system comes into play I don't know if that's going to be next year or the year after but it's coming that will help add a little uh, I guess a little accountability in terms of getting calls right uh, and I I would love for umpires to be more fairly assessed and their place at the big league level be more dependent on results. I don't, I don't think it needs to be, you know, Hey, you've had a bad week. We're going to send you down or anything like that. But uh, I, I think if an umpire has, you know, a couple of bad years in a row, all right, let's, let's consider some things here. Now, how much can umpires really suck with the automatic balls and strike system? And review system in place. Well, I guess we'll wait and see. I think what is most likely to happen is that there's a challenge system in which you have a finite amount of challenges, as opposed to just every call uh, automatically being called by uh, an automatic system. So uh, umpires will still have a, a place in calling balls and strikes, but they'll be able to be checked, uh, and uh, you know, especially in some some key situations. Uh, 877-881-1053, 877-881-1053, the number to call, also the number to text, uh, although I don't know that I have the, oh yeah, I do have the text thing up, so maybe we'll get to some of those. Uh, at Jared Sandler on Twitter as well, if you want to join the Twitter live stream. All right, Colin and McKinney, you've been waiting patiently to join us here on Extra Innings on 105 Through the Fan. Hey, Colin. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. What do you got for us? Uh, I'm just thinking I'm really glad we got this first win against the Astros. We got a whole series. Um, but in game two, we have Renel Blanco again, who really put us down last time. And just being oh, our team is so uh, based on our capability to to, uh, to make offense. Um, I'm kind of wondering, do you think it favors Blanco or the Rangers more that they're going to see him again pretty soon? And what do you think the, what do you think they can make in terms of uh, some adjustments? Yeah, I think it favors the Rangers. I I very much expect uh, the Rangers to get to Ronel Blanco. I don't know that they're going to do it in the same way they did it to J.P. France. Uh, Ronel Blanco deserves a lot of credit for the start he's had. You know, nothing to take away from him. I I'm not. It probably sounds unfair to say he's not a good pitcher, but I I think if I had to guess, unless this is a, a lightning in a bottle type year, which well, Rangers fans, uh, you know, have experienced some of those. You know, Martin Perez had an All Star Lightning in a bottle type year a couple years ago. 
Uh, Mike Miner had an all-star lightning in a bottle type year. Uh, although, you know, he always had talent, was having a tough time staying healthy. Uh, Ronel Blanco is not, you know, a young up and coming prospect. He's a 30 year old who, uh, you know, has had a great start to the season. And maybe that great start continues tomorrow. Maybe, you know, he has a great month. I, I just, I think ultimately at the end of the year, Ronel Blanco is going to be a guy that we look at as kind of an average major league pitcher. Uh, so I, I, I like, I think anytime you've got a lineup as talented as Texas's lineup and as adept at controlling the zone, I'll take my chances, you know, facing another, uh, you know, another, uh, let's just say good pitcher because he's pitching well right now, twice in a you know short stretch. And as far as adjustments, I think if the Rangers uh, were to assess what they did, they would probably tell you that, or, and they, they some guys did say they were too patient against him. They let him create leverage situations. Sometimes patience is good, right? Against J.P. France, patience pays off because J.P. France, you know, isn't the world's greatest strike thrower, and he certainly wasn't tonight. Renel Blanco is, you know, not necessarily known to be a great strike thrower, but he's also a guy who will give you opportunities early in at bats. I think the Rangers felt like they had opportunities early in at bats, but they were leaning too heavily on the idea that he's not necessarily the greatest strike thrower which is not inaccurate. Blanco's had control issues in, in years past, but they had opportunities early, and so I think you're going to see a more aggressive Rangers lineup tomorrow. That is my guess, a, a group that is more aggressive. And remember, all right, remember, don't be the person who champions aggression when a guy gets a hit, but then is the first one to throw your hands up when a guy pops up first pitch fastball, right? It's not, you can't look at the result. You got to look at the swing decision. There's a difference between you know, being aggressive by swinging at the right pitch, but not having you know a favorable result than there is swinging at the wrong pitch, right? If I'm Marcus Swim, uh, swim. if I'm Marcus Simeon, I don't want to swing at a very first pitch fastball that is just dotting the outside corner. That's not my strength. I like fastballs middle in. So if I'm going to swing first pitch, I, I want I want a pitch that's middle in. It doesn't necessarily have to be a fastball. I want a pitch that's that's middle in. I don't I don't know that I want to swing at the pitch on the very outside corner, right? Uh, and there there you know there there contextual uh, variations to this, and and you know depending on the situation. But that that's what you should assess. So if the Rangers are aggressive tomorrow. And, and some of it we won't know, right? Some of it, like, we don't know what is communicated to the players before the game and their game plan. We don't know what they've been told. Hey, look for this, look for that, right? So, you know, that's the key, though. We want to make sure that if you're aggressive, you're, you're making the right decisions. You know, you, you want to be aggressive in the right way. And I expect the Rangers to be more aggressive against Ronel Blanco tomorrow. Uh, let's go to Chris in El Paso. Joining us here on Extra Innings. Hey, Chris. Hey, Jared. I love the Odyssey app. I can hear my Rangers way, way over here when I'm out of town. Um, first of all, yes, Angel Hernandez sucks, so let's just get on with it. Number two, Brock Burke's not very good right now. What are your thoughts on go ahead and let's bring up Jack Leiter and let's see what he can do? Yeah, so I don't want to bring up Jack Leiter for Brock Burke because I don't know that that is, is the role in which it makes sense to bring up Jack Leiter, first of all. Second of all, uh, I could see the Rangers making a roster move and sending Brock Burke down to AAA tomorrow, but they're not going to do that and call up a guy who won't be available to pitch for four days, right? Because Jack Leiter pitched tonight. He pitched well. He gave up three solo home runs, but that's it. He gave up three runs on six hits over six innings. 10 strikeouts, no walks. I tweeted this uh, earlier. I think what is most encouraging about what Jack Leiter has done so far this season is uh, his strike throwing. It is much improved. He is getting ahead of guys. Uh, he's not walking guys as much. If you look at Jack Leiter's numbers so far this season, uh, you'll be very impressed because Jack Leiter now three appearances, 14 and a third innings, 25 strikeouts, three walks. I could see the Rangers maybe using Jack Leiter in a relief role at some point. 
I don't know that right now is the time for that. I don't want to totally rule it out. But I think because he's continuing to make progress as a starter, I think you let him continue to make progress as a starter with the understanding that you're probably going to need a starter here at some point uh, in the near future because that's just how it always works out. But even if they were open to having Jack Leiter pitch out of the bullpen in the next couple weeks, it'd be tough to justify making that move today or tomorrow because he wouldn't be available for the next four days. So you're you're sending Brock Burke down and replacing him with someone you can't use. One of the benefits of sending a guy down is not only maybe getting a better option or someone who uh, is is just in a better way, but it's another you know hopefully fresh arm you have for that next game. And because the Rangers did end up needing to uh, get not just four innings, but four innings and use five different pitchers out of the bullpen. It wouldn't be bad to have a fresh arm. So I would not be surprised if they sent Brock Burke down, but I don't think it would be for Jack Leiter right now, if that makes sense. Uh, But I appreciate the call. It's always great having people listening all over the state and beyond. And yes, the Odyssey app on your smartphone listening device is one way you can do just that. Uh, Luis and Laredo joining us here on Extra Innings. Hey, Luis. Yes, I just want to second that. Thanks for always taking my call, Jared. The Odyssey app is a godsend because... Obviously, I live seven hours away from the DFW area. Love yours. Love Matt. Love Eric. Feel like you guys are just basically part of the family here, thanks to the Odyssey app. So I want to just also mention about tonight. Um, I read that Nathaniel Lowe is going on a rehab assignment. That I'm very, very optimistic that hopefully he'll be back in the next week or so, uh, God willing. And I, the caller before just took my just took my thought is, you know, hypothetically, if Heaney struggles or if John Gray struggles, you know, I read that Jack Leiter had a had an outstanding performance tonight. I, I like you, also noticed that he has better command of his pitches. He's not walking, giving guys free bases. And if my question is basically, if it's not now, then when? I mean, I think now is the time, but I disagree with you, Jared, with all due respect. I just, I wouldn't want to see him come to the big leagues in a relief role. Um, I, you know, I don't know if you mess up pitchers like that. I just, you know, I think. I didn't I, say I wanted him to come in a relief role. Okay, well, I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't want him to come in a relief role this year. Um, I mean, I know it. You know, I know that that might be the the best thing, but you know, uh, I think the guy is going to be a starter in the big leagues. But I just would rather him come and start right away. But again, I just want to get your thoughts on it and have a good day. Yeah, appreciate it, Luis. Yeah, I, I, just to be clear, I'm advocating to keep him in a starter's role. I'm just saying, I, when you are competing to win a World Series. And the Rangers, I guess, are right now competing just to win a division. But when you have World Series aspirations, uh, sometimes you do things that uh, are more focused on the team this year than moving forward in more of a developmental sense. So all I'm saying is I don't think – I mean, they used Owen White last year. I think they had every intention of using Owen White as a reliever. He just stopped pitching well. Uh, I I, I don't think that it is – out of the discussion that they would use Jack Leiter as a reliever. I I would prefer they use him as a starter, uh, but that's also kind of based on the idea that they've got guys who can get the job done in the bullpen. Remember last year they didn't. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see if guys just are not getting the job done in the bullpen, and we're not at that point yet. I mean, we're nowhere near that point yet. But if something like last year's situation unfolds, well, now you got to kind of have all hands on deck. That that that's the scenario in which I think they'd consider Jack Leiter's a reliever. I think otherwise it's it's a starter's role. And then I, I don't know that I agree with the if not now when. First of all, uh, you're adding Michael Lorenzen to the rotation, so what you can't have you're not going to have a seven man rotation. I think you keep Jack Leiter as a starter in the minors. I mean he went six innings for the first time all season this year, and. A guy gets hurt. Maybe you want to move a guy to the bullpen. All right, he's ready to go. Uh, Now, they're in a 17-game and 17-day stretch. Is it possible that the Rangers call him up for a spot start? If their starters get into a, 
a stretch where they're they're pitching deep into games and Bruce Bochy wants to give guys an extra day, it's possible. But adding Michael Lorenzen kind of does that anyway. Uh, I just think that, yeah, there's a decent chance you end up moving one of your current starters to the bullpen. And Andrew Heaney might be that guy. All right, well, Michael Lorenzen's going to then join the rotation, so that's your fifth. But then what if someone gets hurt? That That's when you call up Jack Leiter. I, you don't call Jack Leiter up now just, you know, if not now, when? What I don't know what that means, if not now, when. Let's, let's, not, let's not try and put some sort of timeline on Jack Leiter. Uh, he's still young. And, and this is something that I think people need to remember with Jack Leiter. Jack Leiter was the very rare draft-eligible sophomore. He didn't have a freshman year for all intents and purposes. It got cut short because of COVID. Jack Leiter's 23 years old. He's not 26. If it, if he was 25, 26, then I'd say, yeah, if not now, when? He turns 24 uh, in a few weeks. This is his age 24 season. He is going to come up at some point this year if he stays healthy. But if you want him to remain as a starter then it can't be an if not now when because there's not really a, a, a spot for him right now. If not now when would maybe better apply if you're like, I just want to see this guy at the major league level. I don't care if he starts or, or relieves. But if you want him to stay as a starter, then if not now when is is not really the 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 corresponding mindset if there's a spot start situation because of the 17 game and 17 day stretch or someone gets hurt, could see it. If someone gets hurt, then it could be Jack Leiter here for the long run. But there's no rush. You're adding Lorenzen. And I think that Jack Leiter, as long as he stays healthy, is going to have his, his time in place. The other side of that fence and the side that I think Luis maybe stands on is, hey, this guy's one of your top pitching prospects. Who cares that you've got John Gray, Cody Bradford, Nathan Avaldi, Michael Lorenzen, and Dane Dunning? We're going to find a spot for this guy. Then my question to you is, who are you taking out of that? Are you, are you taking Cody Bradford out of the rotation right now? I don't think so. You're not taking Dane Dunning out of the rotation. You're not taking Nathan Avaldi out of the rotation. And I don't think you're taking Michael Lorenzen out of the rotation right now. I mean, he's... he's Technically not in it yet. I could see Michael Lorenzen being a reliever as the year goes on, but not right now. And then I know some people want to take John Gray out of the rotation. I don't think you're at that point yet. Could I see it getting to that point? Yes. And that's maybe a scenario. Like if we're trying to roadmap Jack Leiter's arrival, John Gray has a, a, a bad month of April, and Jack Leiter has a really good month of April. And there's a need in the bullpen, and the Rangers decide, hey, we think John Gray could fit here. But John Gray allowed one run over five innings last start. I know it was against the A's, but it was a step in the right direction. So my point is this with Jack Leiter. I, there's got to be an injury. There's got to be something that happens to get him up right now. Injuries are going to happen. That's the, the thing with pitching that front offices always understand is that you're not just going to have five or six starters over the course of the year. And so there's no reason to be impatient and take guys off their track uh, just because you get excited by a start. You stay patient. The time will come. Continue to let the kid develop. Uh, and maybe we see him in two weeks, a month, what have you. We are going to see him. Uh, but I think obviously something's going to have to precede that, an injury or, or something that creates a need. Bryce in Dallas, thanks so much for waiting patiently. Bryce, Sean, you're on deck, but we're going to go to Bryce uh, here on 105.3 The Fan. Hey, Jerry, got a, got a quick couple questions for you. You've got some, it's kind of on the other side of the whole Jack Ladder thing. You've got four potential starting pitchers looking to come back uh, within the next couple of months, or at least, you know, a few months if we're looking as far as DeGrom. So at that point, you know, if you've got Molly and DeGrom and Scherzer and Lorenzen, where do the other four go that are currently in the rotation? Uh, but the, the other question, the real question I have is, you're getting really, really good baseball out of Josh Smith right now. So you've got a really good, valuable utility guy in him. And also Ezekiel Duran has kind of seen some of that. So where do you think the season ends up with guys like that as hopefully low and, and young come back? But just curious to see your thoughts with guys like the utility guys come back and also 
know, we've got a we've got a platoon of starters looking to come back later in the year, and I just love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I appreciate it, Bryce. I don't think you can this far out worry about and worry is not the right word. Max Scherzer is a month out, a month and a half, um, a mu- maybe maybe a month and a quarter. There's still a lot of time between now and then. Tyler Malley is closer to July, so that's probably three months out. And Jacob deGrom is early August uh, if everything stays on track. So between now and then, who knows how many guys get hurt? Who knows who's pitching well, who's not pitching well? Uh, they, it is a it is a, a good problem to have. Uh, the other thing is two of those guys are Tommy John guys, Tyler Malley and Jacob deGrom. You just never know what you're going to get in the immediate return from, you know, from those guys. I think that in 2025, I fully expect Tyler Malley and Jacob deGrom to be studs. I think Jacob deGrom wins, could win a Cy Young next year because the, you know, track records show that when you give a guy a little bit of a runway like Jacob deGrom will get this year, that helps set them up for their next full season post Tommy John, they can be really good. Like, you know, just as good as they were before. Uh, but I, I don't know what I'm going to get this year. Don't know if, you know, if there's a setback. Setbacks and, and Tommy John recoveries are normal. They're, they, It's not like, hey, I, I've got a three to four week injury and I have a setback that's going to knock on another two weeks. You know, delays as, as little as one to two weeks over the course of a 14 month return are normal. So now that, you know, that could change the complexion of things. So I guess my point is, I think these things will sort themselves out. And if they don't, then the, the Rangers will have an embarrassment of rotation riches if everyone just happens to stay healthy. And you probably see Andrew Heaney move to the bullpen. To be honest with you, you might see Dane Dunning pitch in a different type of role, maybe as a starter, but maybe as a three to four inning starter uh, and maybe as a multi-inning reliever, right? We'll see where John Gray is at that point. Michael Lorenzen, you know, might be moved to the bullpen. I mean, but... Again, the odds of everyone staying healthy between now and then are very slim. Similar in, on the position player front, right? Similar on the position player front. I think the, the more pressing question, and I don't know that I got a great answer for you on this. The more pressing question is, what do you do when Nathaniel Lowe comes back? What do you do with Jared Walsh? Because Jared Walsh is doing just fine. He's playing really good defense, too. They're both lefties, though, so it's not like you can platoon them. Tough to roster both of them because neither one is a, a utility player. Jared Walsh could play right field, but he's not a true utility player. And you don't need another left-handed hitting outfielder off the bench because you got Travis Jankowski. So I'm curious to see what the Rangers do. That That's the one that's interesting to me. With Duran and Smith, worst case scenario, they got a place on the bench, you know, getting semi-regular playing time as needed. But again, I'll go back to what I said about the pitching. We experienced this last year, and we've already experienced it this year. There are going to be injuries, and the beauty of Josh Smith and Ezekiel Duran is that they can play both the infield and the outfield. Probably not playing either guy in center, and you probably prefer them in left over right, but you got the flexibility to where, uh, you know, if let's say you lose, knock on wood, Adolis Garcia, you can move Evan Carter to, to right, so that opens up left. Josh Smith isn't going to play first, but he can play second, short, and third. Ezekiel Duran can play all four infield spots. So you're, you're going to be able to find places for them if they continue to hit, uh, or if Josh Smith continues to hit. Zeke's been fine. But yeah, Josh Smith, to to, uh, to Bryce's point, Josh Smith's been really good. It's been, it's been a lot of fun watching him. Patience, getting on base, he's had a really nice start to the year. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, he continues to... Uh, perform at the plate and the Rangers will be able to figure that stuff out. Uh, Nathaniel Lowe did go on a rehab assignment started tonight. Double a Frisco went uh, 0 for four. Not a big deal. Remember he really didn't get much of a spring training. So I would expect somewhere between 30 and 40 plate appearances for Nathaniel Lowe before he comes up. We're looking at probably a week, maybe a little bit more so long as he's okay. Physically. He talked the other day about needing to play nine innings at first base. Uh, he needs and, and wanting to maybe do that back to back days before he's ready to come back. Sean in Dallas, you're up next. You're eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. Hey, Sean. Hey, Jared. Man, <laughs> literally that dude in front of me just asked what I was going to ask. Um, I was wondering about Nate Lowe and and uh, when Josh Young comes back. 
you know, aren't they kind of leaders of the team? And, you know, what are they going to do with – I mean, literally you answered my question. Um, man, love your work. Keep doing it, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, when Josh Young is ready, he's the third baseman, right? Josh Smith is not usurping third base from Josh Young. Josh Smith is going to have a place on the team. And, again, I am sure that these these puzzles will solve themselves, unfortunately with the natural wear and tear of a major league roster over the course of a season. But Josh Young is, you know, he's going to be the third baseman. I I mean, Nathaniel Lowe is going to be this team's first baseman, but I don't know that the Rangers are just eager to say goodbye to Jared Walsh. You know, they can't send him to AAA. They don't have options. A team will claim him easy. And it's tough to roster him. Except to roster both both Walsh and Lowe. So I, I don't know what the Rangers are going to do. I don't know. It's 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 a good problem to have, but there are a lot of good problems to have where you can kind of keep everyone. <laughs> right? We're talking about the pitching, like with Jack Leiter, for instance. You don't have to have Jack Leiter at the major league level. He's, he can he can exist in the minors. And if you call Jack Leiter up, you can still send him down. It's a good problem to have when you don't have to lose people. But with Jared Walsh, if he's not on the major league roster, you're going to lose him, you know, unless he, he gets hurt or something. I, I don't know. That's the interesting one to me right now. What are the Rangers going to do with Jared Walsh? Because he's not performing in a way where it's just like, hey, yeah, no, uh, thanks, thanks for your service. We'll see you later. And it's not like he's never done it before. He was an all-star in 2021. So there's a track record to make you think, hey, after a couple years of neurological issues, maybe there's something here. Maybe we're, we're tapping back into it. 877-881-1053, 877-881-1053, the number to call, the number to text. Uh, we got uh, another couple calls filing in, and we'll get to those uh, here in a second. Oh, no, we don't. All right. Uh, we had some, uh, some empty lines. All right, well... That's going to do it for us. Uh, the Rangers with a nice win over the Astros, 12-8. Back at it tomorrow. And it's Ronel Blanco getting the start for the Houston Astros tomorrow. A chance for the Rangers to get revenge. This is the type of thing that I really love watching from a good lineup. All right, you faced a guy a few days ago. You're facing him again. He got the better of you last time. How is it going to play out this time? Uh, Andrew Heaney getting the start for the Rangers. Chance for Andrew to to maybe bounce back. Uh and I am sure that Andrew Heaney will have somewhat of a short leash, uh, but we'll we'll wait and see how it goes. Could see some runs tomorrow. Uh, that's going to do it for us for Larry Flores and Ross Lubinsky. Uh, for Matt Hicks and the voice of the Rangers, Eric Nadell, Jared Sandler, thanking you for being with us. Pre-game coverage tomorrow beginning at 2.30. The Rangers beat the Astros 12-8. to 8. Back at it tomorrow on your home of the Rangers, 105.3 The Fan. Hi, I'm Jamie Flores.